The following podcast contains strong language and mature themes. Robert Jennings wrote about an unsolved death in which the body of a man was found at a local beauty spot back in 1984. I'm Gemma Kingsley, working with Marie Colson, and we have taken on the case of solving this mystery in our podcast, Death in Podville. So we have decided to call this series, The Body in the Woods. taking a bad turn. What started off straightforward is now becoming a battle. Obstacles are cropping up in all kinds of unexpected places. First thing on the programme was meeting up with Sharon when she arrived in town with material for us. I met her at the train station. I'm outside the railway station waiting for Sharon's train. I received a phone call yesterday to confirm that she was coming up. I do understand that this is important material and has to be treated properly and respectfully. Ah, there's a crowd coming off the newly arrived train. Hello, are you Gemma? Hi, yes I am. Sharon, I take it? Sharon looked to be in her early 70s. Bobbed greying hair and a slim build. Jeans and a tight knitted sweater. She looked like she kept active. I hope I look that good when I reach that age. She was carrying a small backpack over her shoulder that looked heavy. Lovely to finally meet you. Although it would have been better under different circumstances. Sorry to hear about Marie. I hope she feels better soon. Hopefully we can all meet up another time. And I'm really sorry to drag you back into this. Don't worry, love. Can we go somewhere more personable? Sure, there's a cafe just around the corner. It does great tea. Sounds good. two teas, please. Certainly, I'll bring them over in a minute. Okay, if I record this. Sure, I'm familiar with what you're doing. Carry on. I'm in the Chestnut Cafe, just round the corner from where we normally record. I'm joined today by Sharon Goldsmith, the widow of the late Kenny Goldsmith, whose death we are investigating. Sharon has kindly agreed for us to see the notes that Kenny made prior to the event, and we're hoping that these will work hand in hand with the records that Robert Jennings gave us. Have you had your vaccine yet? I don't think I'll be on the list for another month at least. I got mine a couple of weeks ago. Certainly a peace of mind. Will you have it? I definitely will. I lost my sister to Covid over Christmas. As you can imagine, it's been a tough time. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It sounds like you've had it rough for a few years. I suppose I've become used to the background level of rubbish that filters through the news and internet over the years. I've learned to block it out. I'm not naive in thinking this won't stoke it up. But if you can, in some small way, get a resolution, then I will be at peace and everything else won't matter. Good. And that is what we're trying to do. We have some new leads which we're following up, but I don't want to say anything about those just yet. There you go. Two teas and a selection of biscuits on the house. She's one of our regulars. You recording again? What's it for if you don't mind me asking? I record a podcast investigating local unsolved mysteries. Sounds intriguing. What's this one about? It's about the death of Kenny Goldsmith. Oh. Are you okay there? Uh, I'm, I'm fine. I've just, just not heard that name in a long time. I'm surprised you've heard of it. That must be going back 
30 odd years. Big news story in this area. 37 years. Has it really been that long? L- look, I'm keeping you from your recording. Give me a shout if you need anything else. Thank you. You said you were happy to let us borrow your late husband's files. And I really do appreciate you helping like this. To be honest, you can keep them. I have no use for them. I'm serious. If you solve this, it will mean so much to me. I'm intrigued to know what you have. Here's the box file. For the recorder, Sharon is placing a speckled green box file on the table. And she's opening the box. It looks like there are individual cases in separate folders. There are a couple of notepads that look slightly filled, and what looks like mini cassettes. It might be a challenge to find something to play them on. Looks like that will keep us busy for a few days. But before you go though, I do have one last question. Sure. One thing that has come up. Did Kenny have a scarf? Oh, God yes, I'd forgotten about that. Whenever he went out on cases, he would take it with him. It was very long and very colourful. Lots of reds, greens and yellows. His aunt knitted it for him. Any reason why? Doctor Who. He was a big fan, certainly of Tom Baker. Tom had his massive scarf, so that's what she made him. He loved it. Now that you mention it, I don't ever recall it being mentioned after he was found. We've read some of the statements, and it does seem to have disappeared afterwards. How did you hear about it? We came across a photo of Kenny wearing it in the evidence folder, and we confirmed it with a witness who saw him that morning, that he was still wearing it. I know the photo. He had it taken at Longleat the year before they had a Doctor Who exhibition. He got to see Tom Baker there. He was very happy that day. Once I had taken the box file, we had a general chat about life and stuff before heading back to the station. I don't know if I'll see Sharon again. I guess it will all depend on the outcome. I met up with Marie later as she was feeling better. She was up for some light work. I'm with Marie and we have all the files collected so far. How are you feeling? I'm feeling a lot stronger now. Look, it feels like I haven't been pulling my weight. With all this drama over the last few weeks, I want to apologise to the listeners if it seems that Gemma's doing all the work on this podcast. In parts, Gemma has been carrying the show for the last couple of weeks. And I want to thank her for all the work she's done. You know, the research, the legwork and rescuing me. You're an amazing woman, Gemma, and I'm pleased to be your friend. Thank you, Marie. That was unexpected. (laughs) Hang on, I have something in my eye. (laughs) (laughs) I also listened to the conversations with your dad and with Billy. I think we can push ahead. We've got nothing to lose now. I'll get back on the case and try and help out more. We will do this. Thanks. And you've done an amazing job as well. I know you haven't been able to help as much in the last couple of weeks, but you've been there to talk through things. And you handled the calls from Sharon, which gave us all these lovely files. But we all have good times and bad times, especially over the last 12 months with all the lockdowns and social distancing. Everyone's mental health has been put to the test. And I know many of you out there have suffered, so please talk to someone on the phone or... Zoom or even contact the Samaritans. Call someone if you're struggling. We are nearly through this. The end is in sight. I'm sure we can give you a whole episode at one point. So we found the report notes from Kenny. We also have several audio tapes. We found what type they are from a 1980s dictaphone. We've tracked one down on eBay and it's on its way, so hopefully we can listen to them. The written notes are mostly incomplete. I guess he was writing them as he went along, taken from his recorded notes on the tapes. It says that this whole investigation came from a tip-off from a telephone call from a member of the public. A call came in through the switchboard on the 3rd of January 1984. It reported odd behaviour regarding farm livestock. Unfortunately, the caller didn't leave their contact details or where it was happening. That's helpful. 
This one talks about rabies, anthrax and foot and mouth. I've heard of anthrax before. In fact, there's a whole long list of issues that Kenny could have been following. I suppose he had to eliminate things to see what was left, what was the likely suspect. I guess we're doing what he was doing. Weird. That is a weird coincidence. Maybe we can learn something from his techniques. I tell you what, I'm convinced now that there was something more going on than what the initial police investigation came up with. Yeah, me too. The weather had changed. A thick Cambridgeshire fog had descended on town overnight and it stuck around all day. But I needed answers and Scarlett was the one to talk to. I headed out into the opaque and still afternoon and made my way into town. As I was walking, I became increasingly aware of the sound of footsteps behind me, falling into step with mine. I glanced behind but I couldn't see anything in the thick fog. I increased my pace and was sure the other steps quickened. I've heard of accounts where fogs can reflect your sound back, making it appear like there's another person there. I really hope this was a case. The footsteps behind were now quicker than mine. I was beginning to panic. Then a voice called out, sort of familiar but not instantly recognisable. Wait, it's I me. I stopped and turned round to I'm see... I'm sorry to startle you, Gemma. It's Anthony. Anthony Ward from London. We met last month. Yes, y- yes I remember you, but why are you here now? And why the creepy following in the fog? I thought that only happened in movies. Sorry, I needed to warn you. I know you're going to see the lady of the newspaper. Don't trust what she says. What? How, how, how do you know where I'm going? That doesn't matter right now. Just don't believe what she tells you. Why should I believe you? I can't say now. But we will talk again. Bye. For now. He ran off into the fog and was gone in an instant. I stood there for minutes, maybe, trying to understand what he'd just told me. How did he know where I was going? I'd only just decided to head to the Gazette. This was a whole load of weird. It was freaking me out, and I guess this had been how Marie had felt those last few weeks. It was awful. I used the wall for support as I tried to control my rapid breathing. Once I thought I had it under control, I headed over to the Gazette. There were a few things that I wanted to discuss, several issues that had recently come to light, but Anthony had muddled my head. Is that what you wanted to happen? I arrived unannounced, but Scarlett was happy enough to chat. She seemed pleased to see me and called me through. Thanks for seeing me at short notice. Not at all, but I do have another appointment soon. What were you after? Well, there were a couple of things that I wanted to ask about the investigation. Okay. It seems that Kenny was in this town for a reason, possibly to investigate a tip-off about livestock. He mentions anthrax, rabies, and another one. Um, Foot and mouth, that was it. I don't know much about them. I do recall rabies and foot and mouth being a big thing back in the 60s and 70s. Anthrax is nastier and keeps cropping up. That was the one where several letters were delivered to prominent officials in the U.S. a few years ago, each containing anthrax powder. And I know that it was tested during the Second World War on a Scottish island. Did Kenny think there was an outbreak here? I don't think so. I... I think he was just trying to rule out possibilities. It's just a topic I hadn't come across before. Tell you what, here's my card. It has my personal number on it. If you think you have any more details, will you give me a call? If you let me know what you find, I can help you choose what sounds good for the podcast. Can you do that for me? Sure. I certainly think you're making great headway, but I'll have to cut this meeting short. I've just seen the time. Oh, um, okay. Well, I'll keep you up to date. Bye for now. Morning, Marie. Still foggy out? Oh, it's horrible. How did your meeting go? Well, Scarlett was really excited about our discovery so far, and she wants to be kept up to date on what we find. Okay. So then what happened? 
It was the way she said it. When someone's tone changes and shifts the whole emphasis of the statement, it felt like she wanted us to run everything we find by her first. I don't know, it just felt odd. Like she wanted to see if there was anything newsworthy and could make a scoop for the paper? No, I don't think that's it. I might be reading more into this, but there is more. Go on. You remember the mysterious guy we met on the street who worked for Defra? Yeah, I remember him. Did you have the hots for him? Please. <laughs> he found me on the way to the newspaper office and he said something very odd. What was that? He said... He said not to believe what Scarlett says. Wow. He certainly has a way with words. Why would he say that? What does he know about her that we don't? I know we're now second guessing ourselves, but is Scarlet bad news? Oh, ha ha. <laughs> okay. Oh, bad God. pun, but... But what do we do then? You know, say Anthony's right. How do we deal with Scarlet? Hmm. I guess we maintain communication, but we're choosy in what we mention until we know for definite. Makes sense. Have you given the idea of being private investigators any more thought? That's too much to think about right now. I think once we've brought this to a conclusion, we can sit down and go through the pros and cons and take it from there. Should we give Rob an update? I feel like lots has happened. We have neglected him. I agree, we should phone him. I'll get his number. Hello, Robert? Hello? Hi, Robert. It's Gemma and Marie. We're the ones doing the podcast. Oh, hello, ladies. How's it going? Oh, I'm sorry I haven't listened to all the episodes. I think I'm on the third one. Hi, Robert. We wanted to give you an update before the next episode comes out, if that's okay. Sure, that's very kind of you. What have you found out? We found out that Kenny was an investigator. He was working on a case that brought him to this area. He was looking into odd animal behaviour, and he was searching for a specific location. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, he killed himself. That's what the coroner's report stated. You were supposed to be looking into the reason he killed himself. Mr Jennings, the information we're getting now is that he was probably looking into something that got him killed. Someone at one of the farms could have killed him. No, that's not right. We don't have that sort of thing here. That's not what I agreed to. Goodbye, ladies. That was unexpected. Yeah. What just happened? I was under the impression we were trying to solve this case. Me too. Why would he just shut down like that? Could it be we're now moving away from the official outcome? If there was a murder, I guess it would have some big implications on the police and many reputations about town. That's not really our concern. We just want the truth. We can't get bogged down in lots of people's reputations and pride just because we prove the outcome is murder. True. But we should bear it in mind if people start to behave differently towards us. So what do we do next? In all the chaos in the last couple of weeks, I overlooked the name that turned up in the planning department. Michael Ramsey. I think he is our next direction. We'll see what he has to say about the property development. Maybe he saw something unusual. Hopefully we'll have the dictaphone by next week. We can go through the rest of Kenny's investigations. Sounds like a plan.